This is what sailing was meant to be like. Hi, I'm Kyle from Swinky Sailing, and today we'll take you on a boat tour. So let's get started on our spacious cockpit. So we spend a lot of time here, and it's actually very protected from the wind, uh, especially when you're at anchor or mooring ball, uh, because we have side curtains that not only offer shade and also rain protection, we have a fully enclosed uh, helm tent, and we also have a shade dropping down from the rear to give us um, you know, extra privacy as a screen and then also brings, brings down the brightness of the sun quite a bit. You have enough room here to sit probably, if you're having a party, maybe 15 people comfortably uh, all across the back, around the sides, on the stairs. So it's actually a very comfortable space and a uh, very useful space. So, and we even have, uh, we don't normally have them out because it makes it hard to open the locker, but the full set of cushions that lines uh, the back bench rest here, uh, which we bring out for parties. Uh, we also keep our magma grill, it's propane. We have the little bottles, but uh, it works really, really well. And because we have the windbreak from the cockpit, uh, cooking at anchor is very easy. Um, let's get started on our port engine room. So on this side we have connections to shore power, it's the standard US 50 amp plug. And here we have a pneumatic lift for the engine room. So in the engine room we have the upgraded 30 horsepower Yanmar engines, which is the engine to have in this boat. Um, it gets very good fuel economy, has good power, and it has the more desired sail drive where we have been fortunate unlike many other owners with uh, other manufacturers we have not had a single problem with water in our sail drive oil also on this side we have our Onan Cummings generator it is good for seven and a half kilowatts it uh, runs our hot water heater our um, all of our electronics, air conditioners, heaters, and it does a good job of it. Uh, let's go take you to the starboard side. In this engine room, another 30 horsepower Yanmar. Uh, we also have our Aquabase water maker. So it does 15 gallons per hour. Um, it's been a very good unit, very reliable. We've been extremely happy with it. Uh, we have here our Garmin hydraulic ram for the autopilot, which has been rock solid for us. We've never had a single issue uh, with the reliability of our autopilot. Uh, we have our hot water tank. It gives us about five gallons of hot water, which surprisingly is is pretty sufficient for a couple of showers and and it and uh, dishwashing usage. We have the extra factory installed battery, so we have four. Uh, absorb glass mat batteries that provide sufficient power for a couple days of, of, of refrigeration and battery operated usage. We also have a solar controller back in here for our factory installed solar panels and our 2 kilowatt um, inverter charger. Uh, it's a pure sine wave inverter. All in all, it gives you a pretty clean um, engine room. It's easy to get in and out of. The feature of this boat is we have the Bose upgraded stereo, which um, the cockpit speakers, in addition to the inside speakers, which you can control the volume separately, it sounds really good. We have the aluminum high field dinghy 10 and a half feet, which is about the longest that you could fit between our holes. And we have the 15 horsepower Suzuki outboard, which is fuel injected. It's been a great motor, starts on the first pull every single time. And we've also installed the dolphin fin on the outboard to give us extra planing capabilities and more fuel economy. But it's been a very good dinghy and we like it. And it's been actually, it's, it's easy to pull up and on the davits too with our extra winch we have for the Parasailer hardware. Both of the dinghy davit lines can come over here and 
if you want to crank it by hand or, or pull it by hand, it's very simple to do. Eight man Transocean life raft here that attaches with a webbing strap and it's already permanently tied onto the boat in case you ever need to use it. Hopefully we won't have to in addition to our, our throwable uh, PFD. Let's see, um, also on top of the cockpit, if you're wondering what this blue line is, this is where we hang our laundry. So we installed some eye bolts uh, in place of some factory fasteners that hold on the uh, handrails. Allowed us to string the laundry line back here, which allows our clothes to dry without being soaked by the rain or blown off by the wind, and it works very well. Also back here, you have two opening hatches that go to the bedrooms so that you get ventilation down into those rooms and because of our cockpit enclosure um, you can keep those hatches open during the rain still have ventilation but not get wet. Uh, the cockpit also has another hatch up here which when you open it it gives a really healthy breeze down whoever's sitting at the table so if you get hot open this guy and it pretty much will take care of you. Uh, let's move up here to the helm station. So here we have all factory installed instruments, our um, Yanmar engine controls, and then our three Garmin displays, one for the autopilot, two can be programmable to whatever you want. We basically have one set for wind indicator and the other for speed and depth. We also have the uh, remote for the anchor windlass and chain counter. Helm seat padded for two people, a uh, full cockpit factory enclosure, which we actually modified a little bit on the front and used a uh, better clarity, thicker um, plastic material to give us a, a wider field of view on our forward panels. So uh, it really helped us. We also have up here our main chart plotters down at the nav station. We clamp our iPad up here with the USB port to the side for charging. And that is our, our helm station chart plotter, which has worked flawlessly for us. Um, it's actually nice to have it up higher um, than where you would have the factory chart plotter mounted. We have throttle controls. We have line storage. And three winches, we have the halyard winch is electric, um, which makes raising the main very simple just with the push of a button. And then, you know, you, we use these two for our jib sheets and, uh, and main sheets. That's uh, pretty much it for here. You get a lot of protection from the wind and the rain with the enclosure. And you can easily unzip the door if you want to mess with the um, reefing for the Genoa. And it's uh, for cold weather sailing or, or poor weather sailing. It's kind of a must have which makes things so much more pleasant than uh, sitting out in the rain and the wind. Okay, well let's move up to the foredeck. Here you can see our water catchment system that we use to collect rainwater from the cabin top, which is handy in places that the water is too turbid to run the desalinator. Uh, next, we can see on the salon windows we have textiline covers, which keep out 70% of the heat and also double as a bug screen. Also on the cabin top, we have a cover as well on the skylight. The windsurfer sail is useful to keep it stored up on the trampoline and you also have plenty of room when you don't have a sail for all your favorite friends to lounge. Uh, we'll show you the uh, four peak storage area that has on both sides of the boat. We keep our scuba gear and um, fishing gear and also our windsurfing gear here when we're not using it. Uh, moving to the anchor locker, you can see our windlass here, we have 200 feet of 10 millimeter chain and with the handheld remote here that you can pull out. Um, we also have a Mantis swivel and 55 pound Mantis anchor, which is really a great setup for um, the ground tackle on this boat. It will hold really well. Um, next, we have a very huge locker, in fact. You can crawl down in there, and um, we keep a spare propane bottle. You can have see the propane locker there and behind that door. Um, we also keep our water toys here. I have 140 gallons of water tanks um, in the blue. 
and it'll keep our lines and fenders and jerry cans also a pair of sailor rigging moving to the side you can see we have ample room in the side deck to even store our windsurfer or paddle boards and still be able to get around and then uh, finally you'll see our solar panel array sitting behind the main traveler which is about 250 watts. all right so now let's go inside one thing we've added to this boat which has been very handy bug screens so we have a technically enclosure and this is actually a magnetic uh, closure screen you can get these on amazon and i modified it to fit the boat just perfectly let's see inside the salon we have the freezer and two drawer refrigerator which really gives you quite a bit of storage probably almost as much cold storage as you have in your normal household um, refrigerator. Enough for five people to cross the Atlantic and not run out of, uh, you know, meat and stored food. Um, so it proved to be very, very useful. See, the rest of here we have, this boat has a lot of shelving uh, behind the couch. So we've added storage bins to sort of organize and clean things up. Um, we also have the table, which we opted for because we do a lot of computer work from the boat. So having a work surface is very nice to have. And this table is actually height adjustable. So you can adjust it to make your ergonomics to your computer. You can also drop it all the way down and it comes with a, uh, a thin foam mattress that makes this another berth, um, which is handy if you have a lot of guests. Uh, let's see, over here at the chart table, We've got our inside VHF. There's another remote on the helm station. Uh, we have water gauge, fuel gauge. This is a battery gauge. It tells you your current current consumption or in amperes. Also, state of charge and percent, and how many hours you have left until you've hit your your low battery set point. Um, and voltage. So. It's very handy. It even beeps at you when it says it's time to charge the batteries, which is important because you don't want to overstress your batteries and that will significantly reduce the lifespan of them. So we've had this from day one, um, which has helped us keep our batteries in top shape. Uh, we have the Fusion audio system, which allows Bluetooth connectivity or auxiliary input to your phone and FM AM radio. It works uh, really well, actually. Uh, allows individual volume controls, it connects to our Bose speaker system, it does a good job. Uh, on our chart plotter inside here, uh, you can set this up in a variety of ways. Um, it's been very rock solid for us, and um, the radar has been very useful. The AIS has been really critical uh, when we've crossed um, busy shipping lanes and whatnot, and it's nice for the commercial ships to be able to see where you are and know where you're heading because a lot of times they get out of your way and then you don't have to adjust your course. Here in the mooring field you can see our radar returns of all the boats that are sitting out here. We actually have the HD radar um, so you can you can see these individual targets even though they're all very close together versus just one big blob like some other radars would, would do for you. Um, up here we have some drink storage. We also, this was been voted one of the most important appliances by many of our crew members, the ice maker. It's nice to have cold drinks on board, especially when it's hot outside. Let's see, we'll go over here to the galley. We have the standard three burner gas stove. Um, works great, it's just like a normal cooktop. Over here we opted to upgrade the original gas oven to a microwave slash convection oven. And it opens like a normal oven. Um, so you, you can either bake in it, which actually I think it bakes just as good as your household oven, or use it as a microwave. And having the microwave has been really handy for leftovers or oatmeal or, you know, warming up a, one cup of water for tea. So that's been a, a, one of my favorite upgrades that we've done. Uh, let's see, for kitchen storage, we have three more drawers under the sink. Um, we have trash bag storage here with access from on top, um, which is really nice to have that dedicated trash area. There's also three under the floor storage bins that allow you to keep canned goods or sports drinks or salsa jars. And it actually is very easy to access and it gives you a lot more 
a usable space. And down here, this is one of our, basically the main electrical control panel. So we have our switches in English and French for lights and bilge pumps and fridges. Uh, we also have one, we have a installed Wi-Fi repeater. So you can get Wi-Fi connectivity from the marina or from places ashore, restaurants or whatnot when you're anchored close by. We also have a cellular amplifier for AT&T, T-Mobile, Verizon, Sprint. So that's actually been very useful. Um, it'll get, keep good cell signal to about, I don't know, 12 to 15 miles offshore, um, which has been really nice for many cases where you had questionable service and all of a sudden you have LTE data speeds. Uh, we also have the water maker remote. Uh, you can turn it off and also, you know, you have operate your freshwater rinse. Um, the generator control panel to start the generator. And this is for the inverter. Uh, this antenna here is the inside antenna for our cell phone repeater. Okay, let's come down the stairs on the port side. Forward, we have the standard port side berth. It's probably it's a good size for for two people. You know, it, it narrows down towards the feet, but you still have plenty of room. And then underneath, you have a huge drawer for storage. We have a bunch of wetsuits and other things. I guess I should note, you know, we live on this boat full time, and we have literally not taken a single thing off of it to make this video. So what you see is what we've lived with for the last year. There's also a small hanging locker here behind the door, which currently we have empty. All right, moving back. In here we have the port bathroom. So you have your own standalone shower here. We opted for the, the single head on this side because nobody likes hovering over a toilet and take a shower. This has been really nice. It's big, you can raise your elbows, and but still small enough where you can brace yourself if you're trying to take a shower in choppy conditions. Um, the, we have electric head that's behind the door um, with a 10 gallon holding tank and you have a little bit of storage in the shelving under the sink and complete with shower curtains. See, moving back here we opted to turn one of our hanging lockers into a pantry. We have some motion detecting lights when it's dark outside um, to light up the the items and it actually has proven to be a very good addition for all of our baked goods and stuff that you want to access. All right next is the aft cabin which is one of the best features of this boat and really the reason why we bought it. Back here you have an island berth queen size bed with extra storage on the sides and also with opening hatches, windscreens everywhere. Even for those who are tall, we have padded protection. And you get a huge storage locker in addition to the hanging locker that's here behind the door. So this is a really good space for guests and is a very, I would say, comfortable bed. Underneath the bed is actually where the 80 gallon fuel tank is at and you have easy access to all of the valves and everything on top and also underneath it is the air conditioner for this side of the boat um, which is ducted up to the front and um, works really well. Alright now let's check out the owner's side of this boat which is really what makes it special. Back here, island queen berth. Easy access to get on both sides. You can get up in the middle of the night. You don't have to wake anybody up. It's almost like sleeping at home. We also have bug screens. We have fans. Let's see here, we have our, our desk area for and stool. The stool is actually magnetically held in place um, so it doesn't move when you're in rough seas and gives you area for your computer and other gadgets. 
Over here we have our shoe closet, our EPIRB, and our ditch bag in case we needed it. Granted, we had this boat rigged for safety items to cross the ocean, right? So we had it all decked out with every possibility that we could think of. And then also on this side, you have the emergency escape hatch. There's also one on the other side. These stairs are removable with the thumb screw, which allows you to access the bottom of the boat uh, if you end up in a situation where you need to. Uh, here is our largest hanging locker. This is special for the owner's version. I'll show you we have books and clothes and stuff on the bottom, but it gives you a lot of storage. One cool feature about this is this lighting door. It allows you to completely um, close off, you know, if you want privacy when you have guests aboard. One thing that I really liked about this boat that I did, I added shelves back here for the toolbox. This is actually a very large locker and we have all the tools you could possibly want, need to fix stuff around here. Um, very, very useful. Another hanging locker for clothes. On this side we have the single head by itself, which is nice. Um, we also appreciate that the head is kind of central to the boat and not on the very uh, forepeak. Because uh, things tend to get bouncy up there. Moving forward, you have the sink and shower. Which, this is a great size shower and uh, also one of the, the very desirable features of this boat is the way that the bathroom is lined up. This is what my partner Ted would say is his favorite item. Ta-da, the washing machine. So I don't know how many people have tried to wash towels and sheets by hand on a boat in a bucket, but it's really not fun. When you're off the grid, away from the laundromat, this is a really essential item, and it, you can run it completely off the inverter. You don't even have to have an engine going. So we have more storage on top. Uh, we have our grocery bags, uh, laundry supplies, other things. We also have more mosquito netting up here, and um, it's a very handy item. I guess in here we should show we have more uh, linen closet clothes storage, and... Um, we throw extra small items on the bottom. And we also have more storage under the sink. So she can put quite a bit. All right, well, that concludes our boat tour of Swanky. So hopefully you've learned a little bit about all of our systems and features. And if you have any questions, be sure to check out our website, swankysailing.com. And you can look up on more details that might not be in the video. And you can also find a link to contact us if you have any questions that we can answer for you. Uh, anyway, we'll talk to you soon.